This is the Pete and Sebastian Show with Pete Corielli and Sebastian Maniscalco. I don't know if you can see it. Sweat beads. Oh my no. God. This is uh, two prong. By the way, welcome to the Pete and Sebastian Show. <clears throat> Coming in hot. Uh, physically, physically hot uh-huh. and mentally hot. And Why are you wearing You can't relate, bro. You can't what? relate to this shit. Okay. Having a boy. <sighs> no, I can't. I can't even imagine. I mean, he goes through these bouts where he's screaming in the morning. And if you didn't know, and if you were in the house and, you know, you were just having a cup of coffee and you were visiting me and you heard it, you would think someone's pouring acid on him. Right? <laughs> that, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the cry. And it goes on, you know, and I'm thinking to myself, he's f- going to be four tomorrow. Right. And I'm thinking to myself, as a kid, when you crying like that, is there something in your brain that goes, <clears throat> man, my throat kind of hurts. I should maybe calm down a little bit. All right. Is there no mechanism in a kid's head that goes, I'm tired of doing this. I mean, it's 15 minutes straight, bro. Well, I can only remember when I was a kid having some note where you cry so hard, you lose your breath, and it gets scary, and you're like, whoa, what the what was that? You know, like, because I'm like, I can't get my breath. And so, but like, what's, what is he crying at? I can't remember what age we usually shut that down. 10, 12? Why well, you? 10. Doing it shit, I got another six years of this shit. Uh, this shit well, better end next week. What? What? Why should it end? You don't, you keep crying. I mean, I mean, you know, <laughs> this is the end of your movie. You, I don't want to give it away yet. How are we doing at the box office with that? Right. I'm telling you, bro, that's going to be a slow creep to the top. It's like, Climbing Everest, and you think a guy died on fucking uh, what do they call it, uh, Camp Two? And the next thing you know, he's making his way up fucking two days later after a snowstorm. It's fucking Billy. He made it. <laughs> that's that's the, the, the movie. It's a, it's a slow. People are gonna see oh, it, but they're gonna see it. It's a slow burn. It's it. It is. But now, what's he? What's what's uh? What's a boy crying about? That's what I'm saying. It, it's it, it, he's got to wear his favorite color today. So. Lana picked out a couple outfits for him last night and just laid them down on the floor. And what generally happens, he picks an outfit, he comes out for breakfast. Well, he was upset that he wasn't a part of picking out his outfit. It set him off, bro. Screaming like he was on fire. <laughs> I love it, man. The kid's putting his foot down, man. At four years old, he's like, I want to be involved with my, my, my fashion choices. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and then... He's happier than shit right now. Come up to me, and give me a hug, and a you know on the leg, and he's it's, it's like it's like the devil and the angel in less than three seconds. I'm like, right, something wrong with this kid. Like, <laughs> what? the the moods the mood swings are all, <laughs> unbelievable. I right? can't I can't believe. You think there's something wrong with your boy when you're the same guy that could be skipping down the sidewalk, stop and look over and yell at someone else, take a walk, <laughs> and then just go right back to skipping. The, like, where do, you, where do you think he gets it from, bro? I mean, yeah. apple don't fall far from the olive tree, eh? <laughs> right? <That's my> <laughs> but uh, my my you're wonder right. is, is he going to go along with mom's fashion or a little more conservative with yours as he gets old. I mean, this kid, if he goes like like Lana, he's going to be wearing some out there, like, like, like literally yeah, I think he's the gonna, pack. I think he's going to have a flair to himself. I think he's going down. I picture this kid 22 where almost, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out on a limb here. I think he's headed towards the David Beckham look. Oh, with yeah. a button up, a vest, yeah. and the sleeves rolled up. And I think he might have an arm tattoo. This kid, he's gonna might have a, he's gonna have an arm sleeve. Yeah, you know. You, you, oh, you ever, oh yeah, that's a commitment, bro. Yeah, no, but he's gonna be like one of these, like, nah, like, Dad, come on, man, like, we're going. We're going to Barbados this weekend, you know, like one of these yeah. kids. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I tell you, too, that arm sleeve. 
I, I just saw someone with it this past weekend. I met him backstage at a show and it instantly makes me think you're cool. It's like carrying a surfboard around, but not. You know what I mean? <laughs> just the fuck. I mean, I don't I don't know what it's gonna be like when you're fifty two, but I you know, when you're younger and you got that, it's it's like I travel, I make love to beautiful women, I dive off of cliffs, like not knowing if there's rock underneath the fucking water. You know, like just I live that kind of life. Yeah, well, here here's the flip side to that. You, you gotta go to be a <laughs> <laughs> yeah that could mean other things heroin <laughs> yeah rehab no <laughs> no no college a couple kids i never see <laughs> and they're not even on the tattoo they didn't even make the fucking sleeve he's got two kids and they didn't even make the sleeve <laughs> hello fresh people you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonable recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. When you need dinner fast, don't call for delivery. Think HelloFresh. There's fast and fresh recipes that are ready in just 15 minutes or less. Plus, HelloFresh is 25% cheaper than takeout. Pre-portioned ingredients help cut down on food waste, while step-by-step -step instruction make cooking a breeze, not a chore. Feature quality proteins, fresh produce, and plans for many lifestyles. It's no wonder why HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit. For me, the HelloFresh has been a game changer. I don't like to sit there and prepare meals and figure out what should I have, what should I do. I just like it. It's there, it's ready, and you eat. No hassle. Now, Green Chef, every plate, is now owned by HelloFresh. And with a wider array of meal plans to choose from, there's something for everyone. I love switching between brands, and now our listeners can enjoy both brands at a discount with us. Go to HelloFresh.com slash TheCast50 and use the code TheCast50 for 50% 50 off plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash TheCast50 and use the code TheCast50 for 50% off plus free shipping. Hello, fresh people. It's America's number one meal kit. <laughs> <laughs> well, <clears throat> the arm sleeve heroin, tattoo, you go though. fucking heroin. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just saying that could go two different ways, right? That could like yeah. be a Beckham look where it's like, oh, wow, this guy's like a... An athlete, businessman, he's got a sleeve, he's, you know, he's caught. He was you know, always cool looking, Beckham never had a problem with his look, ever. Yeah, but then there's a, there's a, there's another look on that sleeve, and, and, and I, listen, I yeah. think you gotta be in shape to get an arm sleeve, right? Yeah, yeah. You absolutely. can't be putting an arm sleeve on a lot of meat, you know what I'm talking about? Only way I think maybe you could pull that off is if you're like a rock star, put a few on, then you can maybe get away with that. Otherwise, if you're just a civilian, uh, it's got to You got to be in shape. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I just th I just think it's like wearing a you know, like I'm not going to sit there and wear a tank top at this point because a I got no biceps anymore. <laughs> and, and the and the body just doesn't warrant me in that type of outfit. I think the same thing with a with a tattoo. If you're wearing tattoos, right, and you're out of shape, the tattoo just doesn't fit with the. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Like one hundred percent. You got if you got a big fat arm and you got a sleeve on it, yeah. it starts to look like you know. What are you trying to? What are you trying to do? <laughs> yeah. Wow. If you're gonna get an arm sleeve, you gotta stay thin. That's all I'm saying. For the for the fashion of it, I uh, full arm sleeve. I couldn't agree more. But you know, then you, then you get people getting tattoos for like remembering and all that kind of, you know. So yeah, whatever, that's a whole yeah, but I hear you. But I hear you. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, listen, um, I I'm really fascinated with the crying as far as like um, now like is Sadie's the same way at ten already with the outfits. I can't remember when it started, but like how 
how is this going to start to play out? Like literally, you, you think you like, are you ever going to let your kids dress themselves and just whatever they come down in? Because that ain't happening. Well, right <clears throat> you know, I'm seeing it uh, more at the seven, eight, nine level with girls are starting to wear like uh, midriffs and shit, you know, where the belly shows. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, that ain't happening over here. Uh, Lana has uh, Serafina. And, and I and I gotta come on Lana here. Just a beautiful array of clothing for a six year old girl. Like her last <laughs> nice. day of school today, right? Last day yeah. of school. She's in a pink dress and beautiful. little uh little uh like sparkly kind of dress shoes. She looks like a little doll, you know? Yeah. For the last day of kindergarten. And uh by the way, which I'm going to uh, right after this, uh nice. I don't know, did, did did Sadie have a kindergarten graduation? Yeah, I can't remember. I mean, uh, I th I think it's some form or another. Like like even this year, she uh, last day of school is next week for them, and she's graduating from fourth to fifth grade. Now where she goes to school starting in fifth grade, it's all the same big compound, but now you're in a different part of the school. It's like mid middle school, I guess. So they do a walkout. Like a walk out from fourth grade to fifth grade. Uh, even that, I got to go to that. You know, it's a walk out. That's... My dad didn't go to any of this shit ever. You telling me, bro? My, I think my dad, the only time he showed up, and even this was kind of like, he was like, do I really got to go? Was when I graduated college. And I'm, you know, listen, <laughs> when I graduate. Yeah, well, he's proud of that. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Based on my grades, he was like, "Jesus Christ, I came all the way out here for this." You know, like it's not like a, it's not like I'm graduating uh, cum laude. You know, it's like one of those. You know, it's yeah. uh, my every graduation I've ever had in my life, whether it be you know from junior high to high school, high school, and it, it's always been the name, and that's it. There's nothing <laughs> been like. <laughs> Like were you were you ever like Pete Corielli, no, Cum Laude? I, not only that, I did, I wasn't even aware of that shit until like graduate. I'm like, what is this cool? What the fuck is going on? <laughs> Yo, uh, so I wasn't like, I didn't even aspire to it. I just wanted the goddamn thing, you know. And like, look, no offense to your college, but I think it's kind of like mine. I went freaking for Donia State. Once I picked the college, I picked. Did it? Did it matter? Did it really fucking matter? I mean, it's not it's not Stanford, so it don't really matter. You know, I what, what would you be more impressed if I told you I graduated from Fredonia with A's instead of C's? <laughs> Who gives a fuck? <laughs> you know what I'm saying, bro? Hey, anyone looking at it is already going hey, Fredonia. What the fuck is that? <laughs> what do you think they're doing a deep dive into my transcript? Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> listen. Suffice it to say, if you if you were looking for a job out of college, right, right, and, and same thing with me, bro. Northern Illinois University. I, I don't think anybody was looking at that as as a uh, as a haven for intelligence. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I just. I even bail halfway through yours, Northern Illa. What guy? What? What is this? How many letters? I can't even get this on a sweatshirt. <laughs> <laughs> what did you guys call yourselves for short? NIU. NIU. Did anyone know? Have any? And then people go, "What's that?" <laughs> right? You know. You know. You know what our our saving grace was? What? Cindy Crawford went to our college. That was that was like. I think they put that on the admissions wow. uh, pamphlet. <laughs> yeah, right? like that was that's the that big. was the sell point. <laughs> that's big. That's big. We had we had from Dances with Wolves, the white woman that Costa fell in love with that was living with the Indians. She went to Fredonia. Mary McCormick, I believe, is the name. So oh, yeah, wow. we, we're really reaching, I, bro. Oh yeah, I mean just. Alma mater coming out there. Mine was, I say, for Donny Bingo. What the fuck? Why? What is that? So, anyway. Sounds like a oh, gas shit. station. They always got good gas for Donia. For Donia 76. You ever go over there? It sounds like. 
So oh, listen. Shit. Yeah. No, yeah, I, never, I don't think just, I went just, to the graduation for kindergarten, though. Oh, so I'm going to the graduation today, right? Yeah, you know, yeah. it's cute, whatever, graduate. She's excited. Of course. Lana says, you know, she's like, I'm going to cry. Lana says she's going to cry, so you know this is this is like unheard of when she starts bawling. And then after that, there's a party at the park for the kindergarten class, and I saw it on our calendar because Lana and I share this calendar. It says party at the park. I go, is this like um, is this through the school? Like, is the school putting this on, or what is this party at the park? She goes, no, no, it's the it's the parents putting this on. So I gotta go to the park after this for graduation party, right? Yeah. Fine, go. But my dad's coming in, right? Let me ask you this. Uh, my dad hasn't seen the yard yet. And you ever have a moment where you want to see your parents' reaction to something? You don't want to have them go to, like, go, and then they see it, and then you come, yeah. and you go, oh, what do you think? You, you kind of want to be there when they walk through. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Could be it could be like a house. Let's say you're buying a house. You don't want anybody to see it without you kind of escorting them through. Anyway, my dad's Bro, coming. I could put up a new fence and I don't want my dad to see it till I'm there to go. You see that? Look at that level yeah. I made that shit. Nice. Yeah, of course. Let alone this whole big thing. Of course. So what's the timing wise? You're gonna be at the park while he's getting in? Well, so I gotta have him come to the park. Right. And then I'm gonna take Perfect. him from the park back to the house, settle him in. Now, this guy is just coming off of surgery, right? He had his uh, prostate operated on. And he told me yesterday his prostate was pretty big. They had to shave it down about 50%, but even now it's it's big, you know? They, and I don't know how this shit works, shaving down prostates or right. what have you, but yeah, the guy's yeah. exhausted. He's exhausted. Yeah. He was about at 6.30 now because he's, he's just, you know, getting over the wow. surgery. Wow. So uh, he's going to come in. And uh, it's going to be Father's Day. And this is what I wanted to ask you about Father's Day because it's coming up here. On Father's Day, do you get to decide what you do? Or is it decided for you? It's really interesting, you know? That's a really, that's the question, you know? Like Father's Day, I can't speak for mothers, but for Father's Day, if it was really Father's Day, it should be like daddy's going to sit on the porch and smoke weed and drink some beer and listen to Billy Joel all fucking day. And nobody's going to say nothing to him unless I speak to you. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know what your version would be. Right. But, you know, that's the well, I'm saying. Listen. Father's Day, you're a father. So the only reason you're a father is because you have kids. So it's expected, I think, it's a societal expectation <clears throat> that the father spend Father's Day with his kids and his family, right? Right. It's right. not It's not man day. What you're describing is if they had a man day, you go, okay, listen. Right. So what's happening on man day? You're going to go out, smoke a little weed, drink <laughs> yeah. some beer. <clears throat> Might go to the there gun range, <laughs> shit like <laughs> that, right? Yeah, but listen, before, you know, I right, continue. I don't want to. Of course, okay. I'm no, a no. man. I want to hang out with my kid anyway. I don't need this stupid thing telling me to yeah, hang out. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Listen, we don't got to make you know? a big fuss over Father's right, Day, right, right. and I don't know what the hell we got planned for Father. My father's gonna be here on Father's Day, so I figure I don't know. We're probably just hanging out at the house, maybe going to the pool, what have you. Actually, we're gonna go to my sister's house. For a little bit. Anyway, Lana threw this at me, and I got to get your take on this. I'm talking about Father's Day, birthday, whatnot. So I'm turning 50 July 8th. By the way, are you coming? No, probably not. I can't. I mean, I'm coming, <laughs> I'm coming to do the cast. I'm coming to do that stuff. But I can't make the pate. Oh, okay. Well. Yeah. I wish. It's, no. No, I got to tell you. First the wedding, not this. Bro, I, I listen, I literally 
went to see the movie premiere and ended up in the emergency room after my support for you. You know what I'm saying? I'm kidding. I'm, kidding. I'm, I'm there for you. You know that. No, I don't. Busting your balls. Anyway, I'm having a 50th birthday By the way, I saw in the news that DiCaprio's on a yacht somewhere in the Mediterranean, so I'm like, oh, he ain't going to be able to make it, so I'm going to be well, at those shows. like, like... On a spinoff of that, when you tell me when you tell me that yacht in the middle of the ter- Mediterranean, right? Like, mm-hmm. I just want to know how that all happens. Like, what happens? You get a phone call, and it's like, "Hey, Leo's going on a yacht. Meet meet us at the dock, and we're gonna go to the Mediterranean." I just want to know how that un- un- unfolds. But that's yeah. for another day. I want to stay yeah. on topic here. Lana throws me this curveball, which I want to get your take on it. She goes, hey, a few of the group moms are going to Las Vegas July 6th, 7th, and they're coming back July 8th, right? You know, sh- you know should I go? Now, I go, you're not going to be here on my birthday, my, my 50th birthday? She goes, no, well, I'll, I'll come home in the morning, right? Now, here's where a little of my bitch crept in. I had like, <laughs> I had a bitch moment, which I had to, like, reverse it. And, I, and I, that's what I said. And I was like, I had to, like, go, what the fuck's going on with me? Where is my testosterone? I go, I go, <laughs> I, can't even, I can't even say that. I go, I go, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wake up on my 50th birthday alone. <laughs> now, what what's your take? What's your take? <laughs> and your wife not being in there in the morning when you turn fifty. Is that like is that like a is that a bitch or what is it? I, I said, bro, it's a weird it's a weird place to be, right? Because you know, on one hand, I'm like, do I mind? I don't know. Do I mind? <laughs> I think I think I mind that that you don't think it's a big deal. I'd say to my <laughs> wife, like that. I think you should think it's a big deal to be there. You know, but then you know, like, what what does that entail? Too, you're gonna roll over and look her in the eye and go. I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> She'll be oh, there like uh, an hour later. I get, up done. I, I get up in the morning, I turn 50, right? And I look to the side and I go, <laughs> I gotta go make breakfast for the kids? Like, where's the where's the balloons, bro? No balloons? But do you want them? Do you really want them? Yeah, I mean, no, you know, I, I don't. You know, I don't. I'm just like, it's the idea. I guess it's the idea. Of waking up to like something, I don't know what the fuck. I'm half of me is like, oh, this half of me, and sometimes I think we do this. Maybe I do it, but I I'll get you think. Some of this is like, oh, this is a good. Like I, I threw it back on her. I said, when you turn forty, if I went on a golf trip with the guys and told you I was coming back at ten thirty in the morning on your birthday, what would you say? You know. We yeah. throw it back to you. Like, would this be acceptable if it was on the other foot? Right? Yeah. Yeah. So right. I I gotta uh, say though, I, I, I like when it's my birthday and I'm halfway through the day and I forget that it's my own birthday. I think that's so cool. I think that's so manly. It's so fucking alpha, you know? I don't give a fuck. You know? <laughs> so like even now that Lana's going to be home, you're going to roll over and look at her on your 50th and know that she's looking at you going, I could have just been coming back from a wonderful, fun time in Vegas, got to know you. <laughs> hey, happy birthday. I'm I'm here. You know, twinkle toes. I got to watch what I say, but you know what I'm saying? Like, it's much cooler. You roll over on your 50th all alone. And you're like, I'm such a dad. I'm such a man. I don't even mind that they're not even here yet. I know. I don't yeah, need that. Bro, I need, don't you? Yeah. To- you know? I totally needed this, bro, because I was going through it. I was like, wow. I think I was more, to your point, I think I was more upset that she thought it was fine to even present that question to me. You know? But but throw it this way. Think of it this way, that your wife thinks you're so cool that you won't even mind 
if she's not there when you wake up at 50. My husband's just a fucking cool guy. He knows I'm going to, I love him to death. I'm going to be home by 11 in the morning and I'm going to spend the rest of my life with him. So, I mean, oh shit, just getting to know these moms though, that's all. I already ruined it though. She she uh, knows I'm not a fucking cool guy because I went with the bitch move. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of... but you, you you caught yourself before the before the, the day of the event. That's that makes it I, okay. Yeah. I came back with. I said the next day. I said, you know what? I thought about it. Go, you know, just go have fun. Hey, you need you it, bro, bro. Golf clap, you know. Absolutely. So, dude. so we got the fiftieth uh, birthday, and uh, in, in turning fifty, there's other. You know, I went to get a physical. I think I told you about that, but the, but there's another thing that I'm doing is I'm, I'm getting a life insurance policy, right? You don't have one. Okay, say what? No, I don't. Uh, there's a, there's various reasons why I don't have it. It's financial. <clears throat> yeah. We won't get into that, but but hey. but this but this is this this is just a, a life insurance policy. I'll leave it at that. All right. <clears throat> so I had an interview yesterday on the phone. You know, this third party calls you up, and they're gonna they're gonna walk you through like, do you have any diseases? Are you on any medic? Right? They go through this whole thing, right? So, she's like, "All right, uh, verify the you know this is when your birth date is, name, the whole thing." And she's like, "I'm just gonna ask you a bunch of questions. Stop me if there's anything that that coincides to what you're dealing with, okay?" So she's like, do you have any diabetes? You know this, you know this, uh, you know, arthritis, da, 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 da. just rattling off stuff, right? And she, she goes, all right, cardiovascular-wise, do you have any, um, you know, high blood pressure, nah, 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 a heart murmur? I go, oh, oh yeah, yeah, I, I, have a, I have a heart murmur. Oh. And I'm like, that's it. There goes the policy, right? Oh, like, okay. like, if I would have said I had diabetes... What it would have been, uh, oh, I'm just trying to figure out where heart murmur falls in your chances of Ooh. obtaining the policy. Yeah, right? yeah it's, like, it's like a hole in your parachute and you're jumping out of the plane. <laughs> That's what a heart murmur is. <laughs> no one's banking on you to land. <laughs> That's a have a nice day. Thank you very much for the honesty. Bye. <laughs> I don't know, bro. I'm joking with you. I, I know I couldn't get one right now. <laughs> you know, I got mine, uh, you know, when I was young enough to pull it off with a couple of lies. Do you smoke? Not during this conversation. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I think naturally what we do. So so when I heard the reaction to heart murmur, right. I had to go into this whole like, I go, she goes, when did this happen? I go, I don't know. I think it was in the last three years I, I went to see a cardiologist. And he said, do you know you have a slight heart murmur? Which he said slight. And I go, no. He goes, only a cardiologist would be able to pick up on this. Like, your normal everyday physician, when he does right. this, and when they, yeah. he ain't going to pick it up because he don't have his... Right? What so are you my saying question, this shit for, bro? What I'm saying this shit for? This is giving the murmur some context. D to a person that never would have known about the murmur, even if she brought it. They're gonna get my they're gonna get they're gonna get my records. They're gonna pull my records anyway. It says it says slight murmur on there. I thought your doctor would be like, no one else would know about this but me, so I won't even put it on the show. <laughs> that's a, that's the kind of conversation I thought you had with him about the murmur. I didn't know it was for the record. Hey, it, what? Maybe it is on there. I don't know. I was uh, just like, I felt like I was almost in a um, in, in questioning to go on trial. And yeah. then if I lied on this, and then when they when they got the records, they come back and go, "You testified oh, on, right. on June twelfth that you didn't have a heart murmur." Yet we did find it in cross examination. You know, like I, I was, I, I felt like I was on trial here. Right? No, you got a point. Or the people who were going to benefit, I'm assuming, family from this thing, if you did pass, <laughs> and now they're like, "Guess what? Your husband lied. He had a murmur. You ain't getting nothing." <laughs> Sorry, you know, they can't even afford to bury you now, right? 
Right, but I, <laughs> playing it out, bro. I respect that. I respect like that. This. What do you want us to do with the body? <laughs> what? Well, now it's like walking away from my house because you can't make the mortgage payments. Lana's like, do what you want with it. <laughs> you know, it's his fault for lying to begin with. <laughs> Throw it in the garbage. Yeah. So, so, <laughs> so now, now we're going through the rest of it, right? Yeah. And she goes, listen, you're going to get a physical. I got to get it. I got to get a physical. And I've done this before. I was in the process of doing this pre-COVID and then COVID happened and it kind of derailed everything. Yeah. But there was someone that came out to the house and did like a physical. It wasn't like a, you know, didn't hook me up to an EKG machine or anything like that. It was just like took my blood pressure, eyes, ears, throat. You know, it wasn't wasn't anything. Uh, but this woman was like, you know, just listen, you know, I know you're in the entertainment business and what have you. Just a week before, you know, you know, just, you know, lay off whatever you're doing. Right. So there, there was a um, there was a uh, implication that just because I'm in the entertainment business that I'm doing lines of coke before I go to bed, right? Not, there's an assumption that you're doing something. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I said wow. no, there's nothing to worry about. Nothing to worry about. But I was sitting there going, the murmur was an oh, but excessive cocaine use is okay. <laughs> you know, like, uh. like <laughs> just just lay off the, and then just start it back up after the physical. You know, like that. That's, you know a, that's a good point, man. The murmur's a red light, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh god a little crystal meth never hurt nobody don't worry about that just stay <laughs> stay off until next wednesday oh gosh so so <clears throat> so i i think i i think i passed with with flying colors i told her she goes what medications are you on and the assumption there is 49 years old you got to be on something right and it felt so good to go nothing she goes, what? Man. I, go, I ain't on anything. She goes, wow, that's great. And I'm thinking to myself, how many fucking people are you interviewing? Right. That they're, they're giving you a list of shit that they're on, right? You want anything? What are you, what are you taking over there? You got to be Nothing. on something. Never. Nothing. Occasional Advil. I don't even do that. Like once in a blue moon. I don't take anything. Never. Espresso. You're not any on these... The, the painkillers for the back that you got off of those? You were just screaming at a doctor that two weeks ago I, that you needed one. the fucking I said, I go, bro, I need one to get from the floor to my bed, and then I'm good. And, yeah, no, I don't never touch that stuff. I only literally, like, when I go on the road, I'll bring one in case my back throws out. I got to get home, and I can get yeah. home on one. Yeah, but no, but I've never done anything. I'm right there with you, dude. I'm, I watched these commercials. I was having uh, dinner the other day with Sadie in the living room, and a commercial came on for a medication, and we just both happened to be listening at the end. They're like, may cause, and the things they're rattling off that this pill that they're giving you could cause, we, we're both looking at each other like, what do you need? What are you so bad off that you're willing to maybe get all that, like, temporary blindness, itchiness, uh, diarrhea, uh, blood in your da-da-da? Hey. And it's just crazy, but you know, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not down with that either. Well, my question is: Are all those side effects th from the medication what they've seen in multiple people, or did one person take the medication and they were shitting themselves, went right. blind, had blood in their stool? You know, like is that? Could that <laughs> yeah, all, right. Could, that, could all those happen to you at once, or? Did they go, ah, we tested one guy, he had blood in his stool. And right. we tested another guy, he went blind. <laughs> so put everything that happened on the test in the commercial. Or did one person take it and they and they went, holy shit. This guy's got 17 <laughs> different ailments. Uh, that's, I don't know because, right, like how many people have to go blind before you got to officially tell people you might go blind, right? Like if they go out oh, with one guy, remember that one guy been walking? Well, we got another phone call. It's a guy in Arizona. Ah, oh, shit. 
one more and we officially got to say in the commercial that you can go blind for this shit. Right? That's another thing. That's a great question. Like, if one person exhibits anything, do you got to put that in the commercial? It's like, if one person right. had a rash down the right side of their body, right. do they got to go, could cause a rash on the right side of your body? Because one person in the test pool had it or... To your point, does it got to be multiple people coming up with this right. thing where they got to go, okay, put it on the label? Let's say the test pool is 1,000 people and one of them got a rash. You could go, one in 1,000 people anyway would have got a rash <laughs> over the past three months, right? We need five rashes, right? We need <laughs> six blinds. So then you, got, six you don't even care about the person that went blind. You're just, you're just getting a call going, ah, fuck. Where? <laughs> Chicago? Another one? God damn it. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Is there, is there, wait. <laughs> they, they do, they're I, such scumbags. Then they do a commercial. They hire somebody who could say it as fast as possible. You can come on. <laughs> you may get a rest. You may come on. <laughs> like, what, what, what? <laughs> I mean, total scumbags. <laughs> This is another thing I've always wondered. I never met a person that has, has done one of these trials. Have you ever been at a dinner party and someone said, uh, yeah, do you know I was in the test trial for, for Viagra? Like, I never met anybody right. that they've given this shit to before it goes on sale. So my question to you is, how how do you need the money that bad where they go listen we're testing a new diabetes drug we don't know what the fuck it's gonna do right 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 right, right. yeah you know you, we could give it to you you could lose your voice you could lose your hair we don't know you go blind right. and someone yeah. goes oh hey or well, you can me. have ice cream by friday i don't know it's hit or miss with this <laughs> <laughs> yeah but like and, and what are they paying these people i mean for for you what to the, give yeah. a a pill to somebody for three months to see what it does that's kind of i'm thinking half a million dollars no yeah well it depends like if you're like unfortunately you got a terminal disease and you're like this could maybe save you you're like all right i got nothing to lose but if it's just like you know like you said you know like hey we're looking for people that get a rash we got this new pill that can get rid of a rash but yeah you could also piss blood for the next month but <laughs> could get rid of that rash <laughs> and we're giving out a uh, twenty dollars an hour for anyone who wants to take the pill and we'll pick up your medical bills and we'll pay for your funeral if you don't make it at the end of this day. <laughs> <laughs> well when, when the person goes blind when i do you think the company goes ah you went blind like yeah i can't see shit over here do you, th you think the uh the company goes all right we gotta we gotta we, we'll take care of the you know, the the dog, oh, yeah. the stick. You know, is is right. there a? Oh yeah. yeah is yeah, there yeah. like a compensation program that happens if you do go blind? Does the company right. help you, or you, or did they just go? Yeah, well, we'll, we'll yeah. mark it in our notes. But good luck with that. <laughs> Listen, we're gonna send the braille teacher out to you, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know. You're right, dude. It's like. Uh, I was like, where do we, yeah, like, what happens then, what happens then? You know, that's why he said, I never met anyone who was on a trial. You probably wouldn't, but I'm, like, waiting to meet, like, a, a rich husband or wife who's, sitting you know, like, the wife who goes, my husband was on a trial. Didn't make it, but I got a gorgeous house in West, you know, West Palm now, uh, you know, because of it. So, oh, I, um. shit. Bro, I want to ask you, speaking of, I don't get too medical, but last week I had my first full-blown, I, I never did this before. I only did it from the waist down once. I had a full MRI where I had to get into the, like, coffin-like machine. Oh, God. Bro, have you ever done that? Yeah, I, I, I tapped out. Bro, I am not kidding you. And I know this is like, I don't want to sound crass when I'm saying this, it's joking like, but I was literally funneling John McCain when he was a POW for five years. I was like, this is probably, like I was doing methods that he, I was counting down, uh, you know, like I'm 10, nine, like one minute. Not like, like, I like, but 
let me just tell you what, how I started. Then you got to because I can't believe you tapped out because I almost did. I'm driving to. I got to go to Buffalo to get this. I'm getting it at like eight in the morning, and I got an espresso for the drive. I'm about t- it's ten minutes before I'm going in. I'm in the parking lot. I'm not gonna lie to you. Did a couple bangs off the one hit because I figure I'm gonna lay down. Twenty minutes, boom, boom. So I go in. And place is nice, beautiful setup. I sit down. I got to fill out a little clipboard. They're so fast. They call my name. I'm like, I'm not even done with the clipboard. She goes, don't worry about that, sweetie. We'll fill out the rest of it. Let's go. Boom. They bring me in. Get all your metal off. Anything on. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, and they go, okay, you, you, know, you got to wear these shorts because you got a little metal in your sweatpants. Walk me into the other room. Full like coffin, like a tanning bed sort of a thing, right? If you're going to go in a tanning bed. And they go, you're getting two done. You're getting your back and you're getting both of your joints, like hips where they meet. So you're getting a double. She goes, should take a total of about 40 minutes. We're going to put an inject- injection in you. We're going to do it for about 30 minutes. You can't move at all. Then we're going to pull you out. We're going to set up the injection and you still can't move. And we're going to push you back in. Would you like some music, sweetie? And I'm like, oh, I guess so. They give you these old headphones from 1970 that your dad uses headphones. You hooked up to the record player, right? Staticky. And they go, you can't move. If you move at all, we have to restart. Not even like from where we were to the beginning. You could have one minute left. You fucking move. We got to go all the way back. And then she closes it and you slide in, dude. And it all happens so fast and I'm a little big, you know, and like I get back there and I'm just like, oh my God. And I'm, I'm, what if, I'm like, what if I get an itch on my nose? What if I, I I'm like, I, there's no way I can do this. This is fucking, and then it's staticky and loud and shitty music. And I'm like, I can't, there's no, I have my chain on. Oh my God, my neck is going to fry. And they, get, they give you a little thing that you can press if you need help. I'm a minute yeah. in, I'm pressing this thing. <laughs> She comes on the ladder. What's wrong, sweetie? I go, I got my chain on. I got metal on my chain, right? She goes, the chain is fine. That's okay. She goes, I'm going to restart it now. I'm like, oh, God, I already added a minute to this fucking thing. So then she starts it up. Bro, I start doing the music. I'm like, that was five songs. If each song was three minutes average, that's 15 minutes. I should only have this amount of, and then I'm counting down. All right, I did a minute there, and then I do another minute. I'm like, I should, any minute now, any minute. Keeps going, keeps going. Gets up to about an hour, and and she slides me out, and she goes, I'm going to do the injection now. I'm going to put you back in for another uh, about 25 minutes. I'm like, what the fuck is, how long am I in this thing? I'm saying to myself, I can't do any. She puts me back in my back. I feel it start to spasm. I'm like, I'm going to throw out my back. I can't do this. I was ready to cry. I'm like, this is crazy. This is fucking crazy. Nobody must ever finish this shit. I'm like, I'm unbelievable. I'm like Chuck Norris in a fucking Chuck Norris movie, bro. I was so impressed with myself, right? And then when they finally let me out, it was a total of an hour and 22 minutes. And I I said to them both, when I come out, I go, I I can't move. I can't get up. You guys got to help me up. And they came in. You know, they're like 25 and I'm like this elderly man, you know, and they're like, (laughs) all right, we'll do it slow, sweetie. We'll do it slow. And they're like helping me out of the bed. And I'm like, do 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 it. Does people finish this normally? So I was like, I had to tell you all about it. I had to walk you through that. And now you're telling me, I can't believe it. You tapped out. Okay, so I'm claustrophobic. Right. Okay. That's so I had to go in for this. I had to go in for this thing, and I didn't know like I knew it was like a coffin like thing, cylinder and whatnot. But I'm like, all right, I got to get this done. I was I was going in for I forget it was a shoulder or a knee. I forget what it was. It had to be up here because they had to put me in. Yeah. So, it, you know, same thing with you. Lay me down on the thing, and I'm looking at this thing from outside. I'm looking. I go, am I gonna fit in this thing? Like, <sighs> it don't look like. It don't look like you got a lot of room. So they give me the, the, the button. He go, they go, if you feel it all, the claustrophobic. And I said, okay. So they start to put me in, right? As soon as I get in chest thing, I, I press it. I go, give me out of here. <laughs> there, there was... I, 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 20% of my body went in. I was out. Done. 
Fucking out of here. Oh my gosh, bro. Bro, you're, you know, your nose is literally, you know, the thing is right here, right? Right. I love that you know right away. There's no fucking way I'm going to make it 40 minutes of this goddamn thing. I'll tell you right now. They would have, they could have told oh. me if you don't, if you don't do this, you're going to die tomorrow. I would say, let me go say goodbye to my family. <laughs> I ain't doing it. Well, can't they? Uh, Jackie was telling me a lot of people take a volume or something before they go in there. So, like, you would, you, you would have yeah. to sedate me, right? Fully put me under an, an anesthesia <laughs> to go to go into that. Now, was it at this one? Okay, so now they have they do have an open MRI. I don't know uh -huh. if you're aware of this. The, no, where it's okay. So. So an open MRI is a much larger hole, and it's open on the back, so you're not enclosed. The, 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 you know, you could, it's, you know, right. it's not like you're in a coffin. It's open on both sides. And in this open MRI, which is still, you know, I, I, I've gotten through it, no problem, but there is a bit of anxiety because you are, you know, in this closed area. You can't move. And then what they have in this open MRI is a mirror that drops down and you look in the mirror and then you could look back outside through the window. So you could actually see, you can oh. see outside as you're laying down, right? That's nice. Yeah. Well, I tried that. I go get rid of the mirror. I ain't doing this. I don't know what the fuck, you know, like it, it, it's weird to be looking at something and it's behind you and you're in a cylinder. I go get rid of the mirror. We ain't doing the mirror. <laughs> but. An option is that open MRI. Now, from my understanding, I don't know if it's as accurate or good as the closed, but I did go in for my shoulders, and it, you know, he gave me the report it, it, that I have ruptured my biceps and uh, bicep, and I have a rotator cuff issue. But yeah, bro, that I don't know how the hell you made it. I don't know how you. I don't know how you did it. Well, I I got it. I didn't want to do it again. So I was like, I got to get this. I, and I closed my eyes. I was telling Jackie I tried to sleep sometimes and then I'd wake up. But like when when you were saying when you did the open one still, is it still noisy? Because like this thing is so oh, yeah. noisy. And what's yeah. really scary is once in a blue moon, she did it like once. She she'd come in my head in speakers and goes, everything all right in there, sweetie? You know, and, I, and I'd be like, yeah, no, like once she did that. But. She can't hear me. So before I squeezed about the chain, at first I'm yelling, is my, is my chain all right? I have my <laughs> chain on. And she's not responding. And that's so scary. Like, dude, what the fuck? Your only job is to worry about me. And I'm screaming. And you're not even coming in my speaker going, why are you screaming, honey? Like, what are you doing? Eating a bagel? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know? so so I felt like I was alone. And then anytime I'm in a machine like that, even like when I've gone to I got uh for a dentist one time, they put you in a machine that it clasps the sides of your head and then a camera goes all the way around your skull, it's, right? I'm so afraid the machine's gonna malfunction and keep squeezing my head and just pop it like a giant melon and they're gonna go, Jesus Christ, make it stop, you know? And I'm like, ah, you know? And the same thing with that x-ray machine. I'm afraid it's just gonna keep coming in. I'm like, it's getting tight, it's getting tight. Like, and just suffocate me. And she's on the other side spreading cream cheese on a bagel talking about a big weekend, you know? <laughs> So, so, and that's, oh, that's God. AI, bro. That's, that's going to start wiping people oh, out, man. Tell you that you're going to stick your eye in for an eye exam. It's a laser is going to go right through your skull. <laughs> There's another one down. <laughs> I, I, I'm like you. I, I, um, I was even thinking before I went into that MRI. I was thinking, and I always think these thoughts. We live in Los Angeles, so I'm thinking, what if there's an earthquake, right? And I'm in this fucking thing, right? <laughs> they, they, you think they run out of the room without even letting you out of that thing? <laughs> 
my thought was, I'm in the thing, right? It's like this. Earthquake happens. Now the thing's like this. <laughs> the, the, the so, so, so literally, my head, my head. So here, here, it's like this, right? And now it's like this. So they would have to, they would have to climb and literally <laughs> pull, pull, pull you out, pull you out. But how are they gonna do that? There's no way. There is no way. Right. If an earthquake happens, that thing tilts over. Those two technicians are going to be able to to take a 200 pound man out of right. a cylinder by his feet. <laughs> no, you're assuming that like they haven't already ran out of the building themselves. Like yeah, you know, no, that's... I'm assuming they're going to help. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but, that's but to your get... point. They're down the hall. <laughs> Down the hall, during the parking lot, telling the fire chief there's a guy in the MRI tube on the third floor. If there still is a third floor, I don't know where the fuck he is now. <laughs> <laughs> You're upside down, knowing that you can't get out because you can't. Like, if you were 20, you could probably get yourself out. But at 50, you can't. How frustrating is that? To know There's no way you could do it. You I can't know. move in there, bro. You can't move even if you're 20 years old. You're stuck in the cylinder, upside down. Scary as <laughs> what? Oh, scary bro, I I thought about I thought about that when um uh, I was talking to the um uh, the surgeon. I said, "Have you ever been in surgery on somebody's hip or shoulder and there's been an earthquake? Because that that would be my luck. Right. I yeah. go in for 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 so the the shoulder." Earthquake happens. And it's, ooh, oh fuck! We caught it. The, and <laughs> again, again, they're holding on to the table. Blood spurting everywhere. I, obviously, yo, they think they're gonna stitch you up before they run out. You're toast, guy. You're toast. What did he say? That ever happened? No, he said no. It's, it's never happened. But I mean, that's a possibility. Oh. Living in Los Angeles, you're doing like precision surgery on somebody, the heart, what have you. And there's yeah. a seven point eight earthquake that hits. Boom! Right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, 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 you, and you fall off the table. Right? You're on the yeah. floor with your fuck your chest plate open. <laughs> what are they doing? They're, I, mean, I don't know, man. What about what about remember the tsunami in the Philippines? Imagine you were getting operated on in a hospital right by the water. I was like in the middle of being operated on, just a fucking wave came right through. Like the, that's the last thing that you'd expect to to get in the way of the operation. <laughs> just seaweed flying through the fucking. <laughs> oh, bro, I don't know, man. Oh shit, uh, bro. I don't yeah, know, so, man. so, so, yeah. I got my results Friday, and and today is Wednesday, and I have a question for you. Do you think he already knows the results and he's looking going, ah, oh, Friday morning's going to suck. I got to tell Pete. <laughs> he's going to be the <laughs> fucking cane by 55. This is what I go through, bro. When, when anytime you do any blood tests or anything like that, and I've asked doctors this. I've asked point blank. I go, if you got to give bad news, do you look at that like, oh, God. And he goes, no. I do it right away. I do it right away, and I get it over with. I don't. I don't postpone it because I, I feel like it's my duty. If there is anything that I see that could be an issue, that I call right away. But yeah. if I were me, the doctor, huh. I'd be like, I'd be putting that off for as long as I could. Like if if, if I got the if he's got the results right now, yeah, and he sees something that he's like, oh wow, man. I would, I would say, as a doc, I'd say, eh, it's Father's Day weekend. I, I'll call him Monday. Let, let him enjoy the Father's Day, let's, right? Let's take it a step further. The guy knows Fourth of July means a lot to me. Let's, let's <laughs> put it off till after that. You know, give me one more Fourth, baby. <laughs> but, but what if you call the office on June twenty fourth and you go, yeah, no, I, I had something done there a few weeks ago. I'm just calling for my results right yeah and he's waiting for july 5th and he don't uh, like if he don't call you back don't you get don't you start going oh something must be wrong he's waiting for the fourth of july so i could enjoy it are you no. piecing it together 
I'm going the other route. If I don't get the call, I'm like, you know, obviously it must be fine. What kind of guy's going to go kayaking knowing I'm uh, going to be dead by Christmas? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, let's I, not I, do this talk anymore. I got to <laughs> knock on a whole lot of wood around here. <laughs> Shit. I'll give you, I went to go see a rheumatologist who did the, you know, nine bottles of, uh, nine vials of blood, right? Oh, yeah. She called, left a message. Said, right. everything looks great, um, but give me a call so I could, you know, go into it in depth, right? So, <clears throat> I didn't call back because I felt like, oh, okay, everything looks great, you know, like, whatever. I didn't call back, but then I'm like, yeah, let me let me call because let me just find out, right? So I went a week and a half went by. So I called her. This was what what is it today? Uh what is it? I called her last Monday. I still haven't gotten a call back. So Everything's my fine. question It's so fine. fine. It's so fine. Absolutely, bro. Because That's I don't want to get that. a hold of her in a month and she goes, Yeah, I told you to call me back. And I go, yeah, I did. She goes, oh, I didn't get the message. Yeah, we we gotta we gotta get you on this thing, or yeah, or what we were planning on doing with you. It's too late to do now, so we gotta re <laughs> we gotta do yeah, something yeah. new because you never called us back. Well, somebody would have called. You know, you, you, if it was that important, you're supposed to pull up with you know sirens and shit. You know. <laughs> yeah. Go quick, get them to the blah blah blah. Yeah, you're fine. Oh you're fine. god, man. So, so we got Father's Day here coming up. My father's birthday is on Saturday. We're gonna have a little something here for him, and um, that's it, man. We're uh, well. I got my Bonnie Raitt tickets. Oh, fuck. I feel so bad. <laughs> I feel <laughs> no, they so went bad. down. They went down back to ticket face value. Some of you listeners out there, I don't have the names in front of me, but a couple of you reached out to me. And said, Petey, I'm looking. It looks like they're reasonable again. A couple of, uh, you know, StubHub tickets. So I got on in. That's all set. Going to see Bonnie Raitt. And then, uh, yeah, no, I know you got to roll out. So I don't want to hold No, no, no. What do you got? What do you got? Um, we, well, could, we could cover uh, another topic. <clears throat> I, uh, okay, I did. Uh, let's talk about this. I did um, this benefit at the Paramount for this guy who plays for the New York Mets. Big star named Pete Alonzo. Freaking broke the home run record for rookies for like two years ago. 51 home runs. Big, big star. And, uh, yeah, Mazzilli was there. A lot of cool, a lot of people. It was fun. It was fun being there, right? And this guy, ah, I don't want to talk about that. There's nothing there. I don't want to talk about that. Why? Um, what? Now, I want, now I'm dying to hear it. This is, well, there's really no meat on the bone. I, I guess, you know, what it comes down to, all right. <clears throat> so at one point, I'm going on last on this benefit. And there's a balcony area where you can look down and watch the show. And I'm watching a little bit, you know. And at one point, this Craig Carton is up there. He's a uh, uh, sports guy, uh, announcer, radio, uh, the, uh, what do you call him? Radio sports host. Yeah, yeah. And he's been Boomer and, Esiason. Yeah, he used to be a Boomer. Now he's on his own. But off to the, by me is Pete Alonzo and another guy who plays for the Mets, Jeff McNeil, right? And again, these guys... Super cool, super nice guys. Couldn't be any nicer. But uh, at one point, from the stage, Carton goes, uh, hey, where's McNeil? Where's McNeil? He wants to talk to McNeil. Now, Jeff McNeil had gone to the bathroom. So this one, uh, Pete Alonzo leans over and yells, uh, "He's uh, he, he went to the bathroom to rock a piss. To rock a piss, right? That's what he said, meaning he went to the bathroom to go to bed. You know, went to go to bathroom. Yeah. And then the other day, my own uh, 10-year-old daughter has got these new sneakers on. And I'm like, hey, did anyone like your sneakers? And she's like, yeah. Um, you know, this boy who's cool at the school came walking by. And she goes, and he just looked over and he was like, nice blazes. And I'm like, what did that mean? She's like, dad, blazes are sneakers. You don't know that's what we call them? So, rocking a piss. The guy's eight, 20 years old. Blazes for sneakers. Like, are, are we getting old? Or like, what the fuck? It's with this sh these people with these. Uh, yeah. Like, the minute I heard rock and a piss, I was like, uh, yeah, yeah, you're 28. I forgot. You know? Well, like, 
It's like there the guy's no got party. millions of dollars. He knows so many more people than me, but still, I hear this all should be taken out, bro. I'm not. No, 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 no. At all. I want. I want to dive into this though. So there's like a new language. I think every generation has like a new, you know, yes. like a, when I when we were coming up, it was, believe it or not, cool was like just starting to become the word. Oh, that's cool. Right? That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. About 40 years ago, cool started to be you know, popular yeah. or whatever. Right. But do you hear rock a piss, right? <laughs> and go. And go, oh, wow, I never heard of that terminology used to go to the bathroom. Maybe I'll implement that into my everyday vernacular. So, like, and, and, and you should just do this as a test experiment. I don't know if you told Jackie about rocking a piss yet, but, and I'll, and I'll do it with Lana over here, but the next time I go to the bathroom, just... Casually, I'm gonna go to Lana. I'm gonna go rock a piss, right. and I want to see <laughs> the reaction I get right. from her. <clears throat> so, so right. what I'm asking you to do is right. use this in a, a variety of different um, scenarios. Like if you and yeah, Jack, you're out at a restaurant, right? And the waiter mm -hmm. comes over, and Jackie's in the bathroom. He goes, "Hey, you want me to take your order?" and Casually to the waiter, go, man, my wife's rocking a piss. She'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Bro, you're too old for that term. It's like, you know, it's like, it would be like you walking up to me with a skateboard in your hand. I'm like, what are you doing? Rocking a piss? It's like, <laughs> bro, <laughs> we can't. You, what I'm saying, too, is everything I agree with you about this new terms. What I'm saying is I haven't heard, even my, my daughter telling me that they call sneakers boys. It's, they, they, we call them kicks or something like that. Even, at least it made sense because you kick with sneakers, the blazes. I haven't heard a young person term that I'm liking. Uh, like like uh, they're using new words that aren't even as good as the words that existed. And by the way. I, I got to tell you, rocking a piss, I think I could pull off in a variety of different ways. Here's another scenario. I think I might use it. Um you know, have a dinner party, you know, for my yeah. birthday. People haven't been to the house. Is it appropriate to go to a couple that walks in and go, "Hey, what's up?" Just so you let you know, there's we got the you know, bar over there. We got chips and salsa over there. And if you need a rock a piss, the bathroom's right there. Do you think uh, you could throw that in just like that? And would the people even pick up on that as you did? If I guess what I'm asking is, yeah. if you told somebody else I'm gonna go rock a piss, do you think they would register and go rock a piss? This guy's fifty. He just threw yeah. out a rock a piss. I think if I would say that to you, you might not say anything, and then the next cast you go, we gotta start it right up. We gotta start it right up. <laughs> I was hanging out with Pete last week, uh, and like like it would be bothering you until the next cast to announce it. Yeah, but I don't know. Now hearing you say it at a party. If you need to rock a piss, it's right over there. It almost sounds to me like, oh, this is going to be a good party. We don't even go to the bathroom around here. We rock pisses. That's a way different thing. <laughs> Bro. But I don't know. I I heard... Heard... Alonzo uh, said I... it, and I immediately felt geriatric. You know, I felt like, no, oh, God, no, no. Old. Now, he's saying it in front of a thousand people, which I think is a little bit, you know, they didn't all hear though, because he was off to the side, yelling right down the court, and so only a handful right over. He's like, he's like, nah, he's rocking a piss like that. And I'm like, uh, okay, yeah. I'm with you, bro. If I go to a party, I walk in, and the host tells me, if you need to rock a piss, it's over there. I'm going, holy shit, Lana, this is gonna be unbelievable. <laughs> this party, <laughs> right from the get go. If this guy is telling me. I'm gonna be having so much fun because when I hear rock a piss, I feel like I'm in there and I'm like fucking dancing while I'm pissing, right? Like That's if you need I I'm thinking whatever music's playing out here is gonna be playing in the bathroom too. I'm not even gonna miss my favorite song. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. You know, this party has no end, baby. This party's going, baby. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, I think we bro, I think we found <laughs> I want to make this a T-shirt this week. Put it up on the merch store. I'm rocking a piss, and I, I, think, 
I think this is a bestseller. <laughs> hey, oh, man, God, I can't wait. I couldn't have been said by a cool, nicer guy, man. I mean, this guy is like going to be a legend okay, for the Mets, know. and he's really yeah, cool. Yeah, we know. Uh, well, bro, we, I'm uh, okay, okay, okay. Cover yeah, myself. nice guy. Yeah. We're, we're actually complimenting his rock a piss statement. Yeah, all right. <laughs> so we are. <laughs> and I also hit a deer, bro. I hit a deer the other day coming home from my MRI, <sighs> and here's the deal, all right? I thought this was so no. funny. I had to share it with you. Bro, I can't believe I, you didn't lead with this. Oh, well, I, how, I, how do we at the end of the show you're th throwing in that you just hit a deer? Because it was no da it was slight damage. My bumper is like got to be readjusted, but I, I think I could bang it in with a with a uh, rubber sledge. I haven't tried yet. But my thing is, I thought it was kind of funny. I wanted to share with you when I hit the deer, I slammed on the brakes and I wasn't sure if I hit him or not. Uh, and, and I pull over <clears throat> and I get out and I go to look at my car and uh. I didn't care like at all if like about the, the, the welfare of the deer. You know what I'm saying? Like not even the tiny bit. Like, do you think that's like what a killer must feel like in real life when he murders someone? Like, I just feel nothing. You know, like I feel like if the deer was laying there, I would not. All I cared about was my car. That's all I cared about. It's like, you know. Uh, and then a guy goes over and he heard a noise and he comes over from his house. He was on the front lawn with someone else. He's like, are you all right? I'm like, yeah, no, I think I hit a deer. I'm not sure. Cause I, and he goes, no, we heard it. You did. And again, they both look right over and go, hey, your car looks all right. Like nobody's looking like, oh, where's the poor little deer? Is he out there? It's all about my bumper. It was all about my bumper. You didn't look in the distance or in the woods or whatever to see if he scampered off or he was limping. I, I, I would right. just feel like, do you think a deer gets hit by a, a car? It gets clipped. His, his hoof gets clipped, right? And maybe his yeah. leg. And then and then he's running. And he's like, did I just get fucking hit by a car? Did, 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 does he know? <laughs> well, more, bro, I know he must know something happened, but what I want to know is if he's doing what you did and, I, and, he, and he gets back to the herd, did they, did they look at him and go, what the fuck? <laughs> what happened to you, guy? Or like, <laughs> did they just keep eating grass? Did he not even notice that their brother is half dead? Right? <laughs> I don't know. Dude, I used to love Dia, but now with the goddamn Lyme disease, the car, like, we got to weed these things out, man. I mean, this thing wasn't even big. I could tell it wasn't even big, and it fucked up my bumper a little bit. God damn, you know? So, anyway, I just thought it was wild how, like, you know, I did, did, did a Dia look back at us in the woods going, they're, they're not even asking about me. Look at that. <laughs> they don't give a shit about us. Nothing. <laughs> so... <laughs> Oh. All right, well, listen, man, you got to have fun at that graduation, bro. You got to roll. All right, man, let me, let me, let me get out of here. Let me bounce. Uh, thanks yeah. uh, again for listening to the Pete and Sebastian show. Had a great time Absolutely. once again. Uh, well, <laughs> if, if you learn anything from this podcast today is go rock a piss. And, uh, and, and don't I get an MRI in California with the earthquakes. <laughs> Jesus, what a frightening thought that was. All right, we'll see you next week. Ha, 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 ha,